Ladies and gentlemen, with this particular story, I had a handful of people, including my friend, Elissa Deej, so shout out to her, that sent me this story. And the more I read into it, the more I got just disgusted with what this mother, so-called mother did. Matter of fact, I don't even, why do I have that picture up? I don't know if that's her. That picture came up for some strange reason. I don't know how valid that is, but I don't want to get in trouble for putting up a picture that shouldn't be up. So for now, I'm gonna skip that one. Let's just skip that one particular picture. Let's put the rest of these back up here. I want y'all to see these little angels over here, these babies, because they're the subject of this story. And this story comes out of a place called Reseda, California. So the photos have emerged of three young children who were allegedly stabbed to death by their own mother in Southern California as police continue working to uncover a motive. But I have an idea of the motive. We'll get to that here in just a moment, okay? Liliana Carrillo, who is 30 years old. Let me see if I can get her face up on the screen. Give me a moment. See if I can find y'all a picture of her. This individual right here, this is Liliana Carrillo, 30 years old. She looked like she's about 30 in the face, but she was arrested on Saturday, hours after police said that she killed her two sons and daughter who were aged two, three, and six months old, respectively. And this happened at her apartment in Los Angeles. The children's grandmother discovered, wow, walked in on this. So let me tell you guys, these details are probably not gonna sit well with your sensibility, so I understand if y'all can't handle this, but I gotta be real and just give y'all the details, okay? Their grandmother discovered the grizzly scene that morning, and the mother, Carrillo, fled the home in a stolen car, sparking an hours-long manhunt that ended with her being taken into custody in Ponderosa, the Los Angeles the Police Department said. So I want y'all to think about this. This mother murdered her two-year-old child, a three-year-old child, and a six-month-old child not only after she did that, she hopped in a stolen car and ran. Now, I would love to know how she ended up ac having access to a stolen car. Like, like, did she steal one just in the moment? Did she already have the stolen car? It's beyond me. I don't know. But let's continue to tell the rest of the story. Oh, goodness. The loved ones have set up a GoFundMe campaign. How about that? Why have life insurance where you could just throw up a GoFundMe and people will have their heartstrings plucked and they'll feel sad for you and they'll donate money because you chose to go the cheap route and not have life insurance. How about that? Let me show you guys because y'all might not believe this until you see it. Let me show you something. Let me show you guys something. How much do y'all think that this GoFundMe is for? Does anybody want to take a guess? How much do y'all think they're asking on this GoFundMe? Y'all think they're asking for a couple thousand dollars just to have a little help? Two or three, four or five thousand? How much do y'all think that they're asking for crowdfunding money for? How much do y'all think they requested? Y'all ready to take a look at this? Let me know if I need to make this bigger on the screen. I think I might be able to crop this a little bit more from the bottom and from the side. Can y'all see that number up there? If you can't, maybe I need to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see that number. Let's let's blow this up. Can y'all see that? $50,099. 
fifty thousand and ninety nine dollars. How many times have I told you guys that as long as people are given, as long as people see this as the easy way out, they're going to take it because these people only have these children for the benefits that they can collect off of these children. Everybody does it. Too many, not everybody, too many people do. Too many people in this situation do this. I feel like they're taking advantage of the goodwill of people. It should be a good thing that people want to step out there and help those who might be in a difficult position. But why should we put a burden? We know we're all that are born. We're all going to die. And I think that everybody should be able to take care of their own final expenses. At least not your family should be able to. That should not be society's job to bury your loved ones because we all are going to go through it. Why not have life insurance? Just as sure as you have to drive, you have to have insurance because there's a high probability that you're going to have a car accident. There is a even higher probability that you're going to die. And nobody knows the day. Nobody knows the hour. But guess what? They're going to say I'm wrong for being the GoFundMe police. And I need to have my channel taken down. And I'm not trying to be mean because this family did suffer a tragedy. But guess what? All death is tragedy. Can somebody tell me if I'm wrong? And I hope you guys didn't come here to hear just the news story because that ain't what nobody come here for. Because you could just Google search that. People usually come here to hear what my opinion is about the things that are happening. And it's so sad. I feel like I'm on repeat. Some, sometimes people have to ask me, like, is this a different story? Is this the same story? Are we live right now? Like, like what's going on? Because all of these stories start to sound alike. Because they all have a lot of the same elements. And you'd have to ask yourself, why is it that, why is there this much child murder going on? This often that we could we could tell these stories literally every every day and never run out. Gerberlife.com. Thank you for posting it right there in the chat. Everybody needs to do the responsible thing. So, like I said, I'm gonna always use these moments to try to teach and educate people that we all should take care of our own final expenses. If you can't afford to have life insurance, then maybe you can't afford to continue to keep procreating, procreating, procreating. Let's move on. So the family set up a GoFundMe campaign to help the children's father, Eric Denton, cover the cost of their funerals. The campaign, which has already raised more than what well, y'all saw what the number raised, and it features an adorable photo of the three kids playing outside with their dad. Denton's cousin, Terry Miller, revealed on Sunday that the father had been fighting Carrillo, the mother, his ex-girlfriend. He had been fighting her for custody of his kids long before they were killed. Let's repeat that. They said that the dad had been fighting for custody from her. For whatever reason, he has the, every parent should have the right to do that. A lot, like, so here's the thing. The majority of us are having kids outside of wedlock at a very high rate. So there is a good likelihood that we're not going to be in a marriage. There's a good likelihood we're not going to have kids under the same roof. You know, you have issues one way or the other. You know what? Let's just split custody or I want complete custody, whatever it is. A lot of people are going through this battle. That don't mean you take it out on the kids. The two of y'all need to work that out together. Matter of fact, it shouldn't even have to go through the courts. Why can't adults work this type of thing out? She's 30 years old. Don't be like, well, she was young. She's not young. She's 30. She's grown. If you're grown enough to have kids, you ought to be grown enough to be able to do what is best by your children together as mother and father not just the mom mom making all decisions i gave birth to him because with no seed you can't give birth so it's a two-way street everybody understand just like you can't put all the blame on the mom you can't give mom all the credit just as well as you can't put all the blame on the dad and he ain't gonna get any credit at all but i we'll, we'll, i digress we'll move on past that they've been fighting for custody 
and Miller told the news that Denton, the father, had repeatedly contacted, oh goodness, the dad had repeatedly contacted DCF, the Department of Children and Family Services, because he felt that Carrillo needed help. I want y'all to go ahead and type in the chat babies for benefits. We'll come back to that. Liliana was very sick and this is not, she is not herself and it's been going on for several months that she has been unwell according to her cousin. Scroll down here a little bit. Miller noted that Denton had received an emergency order that granted him custody of the kids in March but suggested that no one helped enforce it so the kids remain living with their mother and grandmother. So did she, at 30 years old with three kids, she lived with her grandmother? Huh, it's a little weird. Maybe I read that wrong. It said the kids remain living with the mother and grandmother. That sounds like the mom lived with her mom. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just reading this, okay? So the dad actually won custody. The mom violated that order by, net, by not letting him get his kids. He was also frustrated with the system because the system failed them. The system failed these kids. Police said that the grandmother returned home from work at about 9.30 a.m. Saturday and found the children dead inside Carrillo's apartment in the Reseda neighborhood of Los Angeles. Carrillo, the mother, had apparently fled the scene in her own car before ditching it for a stolen silver Toyota pickup, a pickup truck in Bakersfield. So there you go. She left in her car and then jacked somebody else. So did she know how to jack cars? I don't know how she does that. Like, did she get lucky to steal a car? Hell if I know, I don't know. But the, she was apprehended in uh, Tulare, count, Tulare County after LAPD received reports that she was driving on North Interstate 5, a spokesperson person for the LAPD confirmed to the news. Before her arrast, the LAPD Lieutenant Ra uh, Raul Javel has said that Carrillo, the mother, was considered a suspect in the stabbings, but police hadn't ruled out other possible perpetrators. After her arrest, the LAPD confirmed that the mother is the sole suspect. The sole suspect. Neighbors said that they had neighbors said they had assumed that the children's grandmother was their primary guardian after seeing them around the receded neighborhood. Bookmark that in your mind. At this point, she is a suspect in the incident, but that doesn't exclude other people. He added, we're trying to figure out what tie she has up north. So Lupe Cuevas, a neighbor, a neighbor of Carrillo and, and her children, told the news that she had interacted with the three children and their grandmother during after, uh, afternoon walks around the neighborhood. One of the, one of the children, a girl, was drawn to her Chihuahua Rosie Cuevas Oh, was drawn to her chihuahua, Rosie. And uh, she told that to the newspaper. I don't know why they wrote it that way. That was really weird. So the chihuahua's name was Rosie. Whatever. Why do we even need to know that? That's weird. Do me a favor. If y'all are listening to this story, please click the thumbs up. Help share this stream. Share the memory of these babies and talk about this story because everybody needs to know about what happened in this tragedy, okay? So please click the thumbs up. She wasn't shy, she was sweet, Quava said. An angel shouldn't have to go that way. Those babies were such sweet little ones and this hurts. On Saturday, the news revealed that the mother had kept a blog where she was criticized, where, where she criticized teen mom stars for being bad mothers. How ironic is that? Would y'all like to see a screenshot? Let me see if I can pull that up. Pull that up real quick. Y'all give me a moment. See if I can pull this damn. She's trying to coach people how to be a good mother. Y'all are not going to be able to see this on the screen. So I apologize. This is a long blog. Let me see if I can show y'all this another way. Hold on. Maybe I could show you this way maybe. 
because y'all not going to be able to see that. Let's take a look at some of this. Bam. That should be a little bit easier for y'all to see. So, she criticized teen mom stars for being bad mothers all the while she can't get along with her baby daddy who she had three kids by. And if you have three kids with somebody, you should know how to kind of navigate that person's emotions and feelings. Y'all should be able to get along. Don't you think? At least for the betterment of the children, y'all got that many kids together and y'all can't figure it out? Look at this. Look at how long this is. I'm going to kind of scroll. I'm not going to let y'all read the whole thing. But I want y'all to just see how much this whore had to say about so-called bad parents. And then look at what she do to her kids. Y'all see how long this is? And that's not even all of it. She also had an Instagram account that was believed to be hers, but it's since been deleted and had linked an old blog that apparently belonged to her in which she had written positive, inspirational messages and a few confessions about her called blogging for good. And in her post, the mother talked about common life issues and obstacles that people may have encountered. Many of the posts are filled with messages describing opportunities for change and telling readers to take charge of their life. She said, I am not perfect. I still have many issues, but overall I am happy and proud of my past. I love my present and I'm looking forward to my future. And she wrote this in 2013. And I always find it funny how people who ain't got their shit together is always trying to tell other people to get their shit together. Don't y'all think that's weird? Maybe it's just me. People who need to get themselves together are trying to tell you how you need to do better and how you can do better when they can't navigate their own lives. A number of her posts also address her family through her children, excuse me, though her children would not have been born by the time she stopped writing in the blog. And one post in May of 20, excuse me, May 10th of 2013, the mother recounted her irritation with the show Teen Mom, in which she claimed its stars physically and emotionally abuse their partners and then victimize themselves. Sound familiar? My sister watches this crap and I got stuck eating lunch in the living room with her, she wrote. She added, they're involved, they're all involved in heavy drugs, can't escape them, and then cry about how they can't access their child. I mean, really? And that's the mom saying this, her. All of these mothers have been presented in, have been presented in, in, in my opinion, and forgive me if this offends anyone, but in my opinion, I hold it, I hold strongly to it. Just idiot after idiot. I do not feel pity for them. Please let me read that again. The mom wrote, I do not feel pity for them. Can somebody please write that sentence? It's a, it's a small sentence, but I want you to write that in the chat. Just that sentence. I do not feel pity for them. Bookmark that, we'll come back to it. She added, there's no denying that there are a few mothers in the show who progress from their situations and grow from their troubles, but there, but there are others that I am shocked as to how or why they still have custody of their children. In that same post, she said that, she said that had also been in, she had, she said that had also been and why did they write it that way guys they're writing this in a really weird way i'm sorry to make it sound like i got a third third grade education i'm sorry but they wrote unhealthy relationships in which she would go out with my girls drink smoke and lose control she said i'm not perfect i was i was a person in these same situations minus the children 
believe in yourself and summon strength from within to push you to to uh, from within to push to you do the best you can do this world is limitless you are your own worst enemy i'm sorry if i'm not reading that right they they got to use some better punctuation or something anyway in that post she also wished her mother a happy mother's day it was not immediately clear if the grandmother of the children who were killed was Carrillo's mother or the children's paternal grandmother. She has put up with more than I can imagine myself doing. She has struggled so much to raise this family. Although we do not agree on many things, I will always be grateful for the opportunities she has provided for me, Carrillo wrote, the mother. I may not have been dealt the cards in life everyone else dreams of, but I was blessed with an overbearing, overloving mother whom also played the role of a strict father which is stupid to say, an even more loving and caring sibling unit. The mother also appeared to struggle with her identity at sometimes calling herself a passionate lover and at others referring to herself as selfish and a manipulator. As for you, have a effing, she was F word, effing amazing day. I'm just trying to kind of keep it clean. She said, have an amazing time today. Be yourself. Don't give to mind those who are hating on you. Everybody got haters, right? They probably need a hug and a smile, she wrote in a post. Scroll down here a little bit. Got to scroll past this big old blog. Y'all bear with me a moment. So that looks like the majority of it. But I think that's really, really funny when she said, I do not feel pity for them. I want y'all to remember that when it comes time for her to be sentenced for murdering her children. So we're gonna say, we don't feel pity for her. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Let's go ahead and get started with the videos. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, to Alley Cat, I'm going to leave you a link here. I'm going to tag you here in just a second, but I saw your question. I'm going to tag you here in just a moment, okay? Here we go. We're learning more tonight about the weeks and months that led up to the tragic deaths of three young children in Reseda. Their mother is behind bars tonight, the suspect in those murders. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen joins us live tonight in Reseda. And Jeff, you spoke with the father's cousin about what may have led up to this awful crime. I certainly did. And right now, what I would like to do is give you a sense of how this case has impacted this community. Right behind me is a growing memorial out here. And what's so painful tonight is that the motive behind this triple murder is still unclear. Flowers and candles sit outside the Reseda apartment complex where three children were found dead yesterday by their grandmother. They were three year old Joanna, two year old Terry, and six month old Sierra. Eric Denton is the children's father who was in a custody battle with their mother. His family is sharing their photos and his cousin, Dr. Terry Miller, is speaking on his behalf. Those kids were everything. I mean, his whole, his whole being and essence is just resolved around, revolves around those kids. Um, they're such little bundles of energy. Um, and he's just so excited about seeing them grow and seeing them develop and getting to play with them more outside. 30 year old Liliana Carrillo has been arrested as the suspect in the triple murder following a chase into Kern County, where she's also accused of a carjacking during her run from police. Denton's family says Carrillo and her kids had been staying with her mother in the small apartment after they say she took the kids from the couple's home in Northern California. Um, he has his heart set on seeing the kids today because he was supposed to pick up the kids today and have them for the week. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up to help with the children's funeral expenses. Dr. Miller, who's trained in emergency medicine, says Carrillo has never had a psychological evaluation, but she says her family noticed that Carrillo hasn't been well since giving birth to her second child. Things got worse after her third pregnancy, then came the strains of COVID. She believed that the city that they were living in was unsafe. 
and that there was a sex trafficking ring and that most of the city was involved in it and they were trying to pull her children into the sex trafficking ring. Whoa, hold on. We're not and currently the coroner's that. office is working Let's to figure out the up. children's cause of death. Sure. Hold up. What did they just say? Right about uh, 17. Right here. Let's listen to what she just said. Let's not skip that because that was not in the article. Living in was unsafe and that there was a sex trafficking ring and that most of the city was involved in it and they were trying to pull her children into the sex trafficking ring. Oh my goodness. And I want y'all to remember, let me see, hold on, let me, did, did they specify? Let me see if they specified the children. Two sons and a daughter. Holy crap. I want y'all to think about this. Two boys. Ladies and gentlemen, we always talk when it comes to, and matter of fact, this is actually National Autism Awareness Month as well as National Child Abuse Month of April. Please do not forget that. I want y'all to think about this while they're always making it seem like it's only girls that are falling victim to the sex trafficking trade. She had two boys. She just barely had the six month old baby. So I'm a, like, like I'm assuming that, 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 that wasn't even like, uh, we've seen that story play out before, but I'm going to assume that they were probably referring to the boys trying to get them in the sex trafficking industry. And this woman just admitted that this particular community or whatever it is, this is like a big thing. So let me ask you guys something. How is it that all of these people know this? It didn't say anything, didn't do anything. People are quick to try to take a channel like ours. You see the shirt, it says, Babies Lives Matter. People don't like this shirt. People don't like me to represent the voice and face of children. They don't like for us to rep our babies. They don't like for us to put the prayer hands up. They don't like for us to shout the AFC. They don't like for people to support this channel. They want to take us down, flag us, threaten us with, with, with uh, what, what do they call that? Lawsuits and all type of stuff talking about I'm disparaging these, these parents. I'm, I'm dragging their name through the mud. They want to get on to me and tell me that what I'm doing is so wrong. But the actual pedophiles and hebophiles and kidnappers and drug dealers are out here doing this to these kids and she just admitted that on camera? Are you kidding me? And you knew that this type of thing was going on? But how many of you bastards are going to actually st going to stand up and say something? How many of the people in her community, is she going to step out and say something? Oh, you knew you just didn't say nothing, huh? Y'all y'all, y'all got all this access to go out and go get y'all some legal ammunition to protect yourselves as Americans. And law, all law-abiding citizens should have the right to go out and protect themselves and go get you some firearms. Go get some training. But y'all too damn scared and y'all letting these thugs and criminals and people stealing your kids just overrun your neighborhoods. Are you kidding me? That ain't what America was. I thought America had guts. I thought America was the most powerful country in the world. But we scared of the people in our neighborhoods. Ain't that something? Living in was unsafe and that there was a sex trafficking ring and that most of the city was involved in it. Most of the city, her words, not mine. Things got worse after her third pregnancy. Then came the strains of COVID. She believed that the city that they were living in was unsafe and that there was a sex trafficking ring and that most of the city was involved in it. And they were trying to pull her children into the sex trafficking ring. And currently, the coroner's office is working to figure out the children's cause of death. In the meantime, their mother is being held in Kern County. The LAPD is working to bring her back to Los Angeles to face charges. We're live in Reseda, Jeff Nguyen, CBS2 News.
All right, Jeff, thank you. Breaking news right now on CBS 2 News at 6 p.m. Yeah, getting to that breaking news now on CBS 2 News at 6 and streaming on CBS in Los Angeles. Three young children found murdered and their mother now under arrest. I'm Jasmine Villan for Sarah Donchi. And I'm Chris Holmstrom now on CBS 2 News and CBS in Los Angeles. The baffling crime has left the community in shock and in mourning. And the bodies of the kids, all under the age of four, mm. were found by their grandmother at an apartment in Reseda. CBS 2's Hermela Aragawi live there tonight with the latest. Hermela. I'm going to try to let these videos play. I'm going to skip a couple of them. But I want y'all to remember that the mother decided to murder the kids rather than just let the kids live with the dad. Think about that. They said she, she had been, they had been fighting for custody for a while. And instead of she lost custody and instead of her just giving up custody and doing the right thing, and maybe trying to work with the courts to get them back to prove you're even worthy to have the kids back. She just killed them. How selfish is that? We'll come back to it, too. We'll come back to it. Hi, Jasmine and Chris. Yeah, this is certainly a shocking crime. A lot of neighbors were out here today just watching, stunned to learn what happened. One woman told me she just burst into tears when she initially heard. But let me step out of the way so you could see the building where this heartbreaking crime is believed to have occurred. There was a huge police presence for much of the day, but it doesn't look like there's any left now. But as you can see, they have left up the yellow crime tape all around the building. After a massive manhunt Saturday, police say 30-year-old Liliana Carrillo is now in custody. She's the only suspect in the murders of her three children. The oldest one was just three years old. It's so sad that, you know, three children under the age of three, what kind of person would can do that? For much of Saturday, dozens of police officers and detectives were at these Reseda apartments where police say the children's grandmother discovered their bodies and called 911 around 9.30 Saturday morning. They tell us a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a six-month-old were pronounced dead on the scene. I just started crying. I'm not even a mother. It's just devastating. How do you wake up and just want to kill your kids? Investigators say Carrillo fled north on the five towards where they believe she's originally from. They tell us she's also suspected of a carjacking in the Bakersfield area and may have fled in a stolen silver Toyota. Carrillo was arrested in Ponderosa, California. About Do y'all see her face? Why it looks like she's got like a little smug smile on her face. And think about this. I'm curious as to who this woman carjacked. Y'all saw her belly when she was sitting in that photo. Let me see if I can show y'all this photo. Take the kids off just for a moment. Let's just focus on the mom. She looked like she about a good five foot two. Like she looked like she got short person arms. I mean, no disrespect to short people, but I'm just saying she looked like she she's not that tall. She's not a physically imposing person. She has a very wide midsection. She just had a baby. So I'm assuming she probably hella out of shape. How does she jack somebody for a car? Was it a, it had to have been somebody like 80 years or older. What do I know? I don't jack people for cars. So what, what do I know? Y'all know I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. I'm probably like a Navy blue, but let's move on past that. 90 miles Northeast of Bakersfield. She did a horrific crime here. That she followed it up by another crime north of here, and it's those behaviors that ultimately got her caught. Earlier in the day, we had heard that the children died from stab wounds, but later police said they weren't able to confirm the cause of death, and they don't know where the whereabouts of the, of the father are and do not have a motive for this crime at this time. And I did hear about that. I saw in multiple articles it said stab wounds. That is a hateful chick. I want to call her some other names, but we're trying to stay on YouTube. We don't want to get flagged down. We like our channel. We like to keep this family and this advocacy going. We are real advocacy. For those who don't believe it, Google search the definition of advocate. But we want to keep this thing going, so I'm going to try to keep my language clean. But that is a selfish, selfish person. Yes, we're actually in front of the apartment building. where That takes a lot of hate to stab. Not one, not two, but three.
This happened. Police tape still up. They're still processing the scene. Those three tiny bodies are still in that apartment. They are allowing some people, some of the neighbors, people who knew them, to drop flowers and some toys. It, it's unthinkable. But the mother of these three children who were found dead this morning by their grandmother, her name is Liliana Carrillo, the mother, 30 year old. She is in custody. And investigators are telling us that they believe she is the one and only suspect in this case. Now, we, as you said, we have been able to reach out to family members. The father of these three children, his name is Eric Denton. They actually have a GoFundMe and uh, they are allowing us to use the photographs. We also talked to his cousin. She explains to us that they had been going through a difficult divorce situation, but that they had reached out to try to get help for her. It's such a tragic story. Listen to this. He is so completely in shock and he's devastated. He was planning on picking up the kids tomorrow, taking them to buy fish for their new fish tank. Um, and he's heartbroken. I mean, Liliana was very sick and this is not, she was not herself. And it's been going on for several months that she has been unwell. They're already trying to set her up for a crazy plea. I don't like that. And he's been actively doing everything possible through the you know child protective services through the LAPD to one get Liliana help and two get his children safely home because she left with the kids at the end of February. So he actually had emergency custody orders of the children since March 4th. He did everything that he could think of to get his kids back home safely. And he did everything he was supposed to do as a father legally. Shout out to the father. There, there wasn't anything else he could do. And this mother only wanted to hurt that man. She hurt the soul of those babies until they passed away. Like physically, emotionally, spiritually. That has got to be the craziest, most scary thing. A human being, let alone a baby, a child who can't speak for itself, who cannot defend itself against the tyranny, uh, the tyranny of its own caretaker, its own mother, the one who's supposed to, to love you unconditionally. That's got to be a scary thing to go through. Now they want to act like she crazy. Thank you, Sherry. They want to act like she crazy. Come on now. But she's carjacking people. She had, en she had enough wherewithal to go carjack somebody and run and try to hide that big old belly. To get her help too, because he still loved her, but she was just not herself. So he's also frustrated with the system because the system failed them. The system failed these kids. No, the mother failed. The system did what it was supposed to do. Let's let's reiterate this point. The cousin is saying the system failed. How many of you guys agree that the system failed? Maybe we'll put a poll in the chat. Maybe we'll put a poll in the chat. But how many of y'all think the system failed? I think the system did exactly what it was supposed to do. Because when there is a court order, and they summon you and tell you this is what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to follow that. And if you want to change, you are supposed to legally change it. Like if, if y'all like Lee, Lee Hellinger, who is in the chat, uh, somebody who has been around um, the law for, for a little while, maybe can let me know if I'm accurate about that or maybe if I'm a little bit off. But y'all can see if she comments in the chat, but I like to lean on her. I feel like she's a friend, definitely a family member of, of the AFC. But if I'm wrong about that, I feel like the system did what it was supposed to do. You're supposed to follow the law. The law tells you don't shoot and kill. If you do it, what happens? We come get you. The law tells you don't run red lights. If you do, bad things can happen. The law is just like any other piece of paper. We're agreeing to abide by those rules and you're supposed to follow those rules. If not, there will be consequences and repercussions. But there's nothing really physically there and you're not gonna always have police on hand to police y'all as parents to do what you're supposed to do. The failure comes on the mother. Thank you for saying it. Y'all caught it in the chat. It's the mom's fault. And I know society might not want us to be able to verbalize that, but it's the truth. It's not always women. It's not always men. 
It's not always moms. It's not always dads. It's not always blacks. It's not always whites. Sometimes it's Latins. Sometimes it's Asians. We're talking about the children. Please remember that, okay? Let's move on. DCFS was one of the agencies agencies that responded here today. They would not talk to us on camera. What happened again? She was captured up in Tulare County. Let's go now to the beginning of the day and the people who knew them and can fill us in. Listen. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that it was the little ones. Lupe, why they do these interviews with these masks on? I know everybody think they're supposed to wear a mask. I get it, but Maybe just don't do an interview. I can't understand what people are saying. Uh, when you got your mask covered up like this. Uh, uh, yeah. like, I can't understand what you're saying. Why do an interview with a mask on and you're outside? I'm sorry. That's just. I, I can't. I, I can't believe we got used to masks that quickly in 12 months. And we think that's normal. To have a conversation with somebody with a freaking mask on. I'm sorry, but I just think it's weird. Cuevas, referring to the little children that wanted to play with her small dog, Rosie, at the Royal Villa Apartments. The same I can't even hear when people don't have a mask on. <laughs> I can't even hear people normally, let alone with something covering your mouth up. I'm sorry. Children, investigators say, were found by their grandmother, seemingly stabbed to death. Uh, the ages that I know are three, two, and six months or so. The suspect, their own mother, 30-year-old Liliana Carrillo, who was arrested in Northern California after supposedly carjacking a vehicle. She was caught in the, in the vehicle that she had taken from another individual during her flee from this location. Neighbors telling us they usually saw the children with grandma. It's the little girl that is, um, that I have the, that I have in my mind as because be the sweetest she just, little one because she wanted to be Ben Rosie and she was so sweet and she listened to her grandma. You, you saw the kids with grandma? Did you ever see them with mom? No, because no one ever saw the father in the small first floor apartment. TV would be on and the cartoons, they'd be cartoons, cartoons all the time. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna skip past this. I can't understand a she is speaking English, by the way. <laughs> I can't understand a word she's saying. Let's just skip this one. Breaking news. Three children have been discovered dead in a Reseda apartment. Their mother is now under arrest. I'm Veronica Miracle. And I'm Jory Rand. This is Eyewitness News at 4. We begin with this unthinkable tragedy playing out in the San Fernando Valley. Let's get right to Amy Powell live in Reseda with those breaking details. Amy. Jory and Veronica, just a very shocking crime. As you mentioned, three small children believed to be siblings, all under the age of four, found dead. And now their mother is in custody. The bodies of those children found this morning around 9.30 after LAPD officers were called to an apartment building on the 8,000 block of Reseda Boulevard. Police say the grandmother of the children came home from work and found them dead in an apartment. Police immediately began searching for their mother, 30-year-old Liliana Carrillo, who they say fled the scene, describing her as armed and dangerous. The reports came in indicating that Carrillo committed a carjacking in the Bakersfield area. Carrillo was located in the Ponderosa area of Tulare County and arrested. She did a horrific crime here. Did she followed it up by another crime north of here? And it's those behaviors that ultimately got her caught. And police tell us they are interviewing family members as they gather details about what may have led up to this horrific crime. LAPD Chief Michael Moore was here at the scene earlier. Again, a major investigation underway here. And detectives say that the mother of those dead children, Liliana Carrillo, is the only suspect in this crime. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mr. Nice Suit there. Let's move on out of Reseda. Three young children stabbed to death in their home. Their mother arrested. Said, I sound racist. Jay Gonzo, how do I sound racist for saying if you live in America, you need to speak the language? How is that racist? Do you even know what racist even means? Google search what racist means. Racism is a system of oppression. I'm sure you probably didn't know that. Said racist. You could say maybe bigoted. 
Jay Gonzo said, I sound like I'm racist because I, and as a matter of fact, I wasn't even talking about it. I said, I think she was speaking English. What I was saying was I couldn't understand a word she was saying because she had a mask over her face, not because she was actually speaking a different language, but I can still answer what you just said. If you live in America, you should be able to speak the effing language. If this is your country, if you make money here, you live here, you pay bills here, speak the freaking language. It should work that way everywhere. Go to China, learn to speak the damn language. Yes? Am I, am I saying something that you can't comprehend? Is that, is that crystal clear? Cause I like your name. I'm gonna use your name. Is that crystal clear, Jay Gonzo? Do you still think that I'm being racist? Which is not, which I know you meant bigoted. Treating other people by their difference. Treating other people by, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Do you want to call in? I don't mind. People say I don't, I don't allow y'all to call in. Would you like to call into the stream? I could put a link that you can actually contact me. Let me know if you want to explain yourself and maybe we can get some clarity. Every person who lives in America should be able to speak English. If you're just visiting, I get it. I understand. If you live here, you have made your home here, speak the language. That is a global thing. If you live in Australia, learn to speak like an Aussie. Yes. If you live in the UK, learn to speak British or whatever the national language is, wherever you live, that's pretty freaking understandable. Why, like, why are we even arguing that? <laughs> why are we even arguing that? Why do you even say that in the chat? That's not even beside the point. That's not even the point of the story at all. But if you want to call in, I'll give you, a, if you live in Thailand, speak Thai. Thank you. Like they said, if when you're in Rome, what do they say? Do as the Romans do. Eat Roman food, speak the Roman language. Come on, man. When you're in America, do American things. Speak the language. You know, just saying. Go to KFC. <laughs> I guess that's what we do in America. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's move on for their murder she was found but yeah if you want to click that link uh let miss june bennett know that you're in there and then i'll i'll bring you in outside of that i'm gonna continue to stream let's get it hundreds of miles away after police say that she stole a car and that is how they tracked her down she did a horrific crime here that she followed it up by another crime north of here and it's those behaviors that ultimately got her caught the mother was caught all the way up in Tulare County, north of Bakersfield. The apartment complex where the family lived is still a very active. To address what you just said, Cher West Coast, Cher West Coast said, let's not forget the colonizers brought English here. Well, I'm going to tell you just like Tommy Sotomayor says, shout out to my brother. And I'm going to continue to shout him out. Whoever won and whoever defeated the Native Americans, my people, then whoever won chooses what we speak here. So we speak English in America, what used to be the native language. Do you disagree with that also? So whoever wins the war picks the language, picks the culture. Everybody understand that? My native side or my mother's side is actually Native American. So I, I can totally speak to all of this. But let's not get off too far, too far left crime scene at this hour and that is where we find NBC4's Kim Tobin who joins us with more details. Kim. Whatever E&E, &E, y'all understand what I'm saying. <laughs> We're just having a little lighthearted moment guys. These stories, are, look, let's, let's just keep it real for a moment. These stories are so sad. Sometimes we need to kind of have a little lighthearted moment to really just kind of just not be so sad. This stuff is depressing. We got three dead 
beautiful babies on our hands who could have been alive with their father, but the mother was selfish and decided to kill the kids instead of abiding by the court order in which the father did the legal correct thing to do to gain custody of his three children. And the mother said, screw that, I'ma just kill him. That's very selfish. Hey there, Jonathan and Kathy. Really just a gruesome crime that's really shaken this Reseda neighborhood. You can see the apartment complex is still wrapped in crime scene tape. We see police officers out here, detectives, as they have been going through everything here at the apartment complex, interviewing family members as well. The mother is the prime and only suspect in this case. She has now been taken into custody, and they're working to figure out what unfolded here this morning. Police swarming this apartment complex along Reseda Boulevard after an unthinkable crime. Three children, ages three, two, and six months old, found dead, discovered by their grandmother. I can't even fathom that. It's devastating. It's hurtful. Now they even know the people. The initial call coming in as a stabbing. Many neighbors, moms themselves, having a tough time hearing what happened. My heart is broken. Like every time when I see news about children like this, my heart breaks in pieces, you know. And now it's like right in front of my building. I can't, it's unbelievable. LAPD homicide investigators say the mother, 30-year-old Liliana Carrillo, is the main suspect. I'm happy to say that she was just recently taken into custody. They say she was armed and dangerous as she took off driving north on the 5 freeway. They say she carjacked a victim and was finally caught near Ponderosa in Tulare County, about four and a half hours away. She did a horrific crime here. That she followed it up by another crime north of here, and it's those behaviors that ultimately got her caught. LAPD could not tell us if a father was located or if there's any past issues involving the Department of Children and Family Services. DCFS is a part of this investigation. They are on scene, uh, and again, we have to look at the family dynamic and the history of things that have taken place in the past. Searching for answers in this triple murder as neighbors say they wish this mother would have received any help that she may have needed. Leave the house or leave the children and leave your family, whatever, you know, but don't hurt, don't harm children. It's so sad. And obviously this is some of the toughest crimes for first responders. LAPD says they have mental health professionals working with everybody who responded to this call today. We're live in Reseda, Kim Tobin, NBC4 News. It's just an unthinkable tragedy. Kim, thank you. A mother in the middle of a child custody battle accused of taking the lives of her three children in Reseda, the youngest just six months old. We have obtained court documents that detail the disputes between the parents in this case. Now, I wanted y'all to hear some of these videos, and I know there's a lot of them, so y'all bear with me, but I wanted y'all to hear this because some of them give a little more details than others. So let me turn the volume up just a little bit so y'all can hear this. Yeah, just an awful story, and we've learned the suspect, Liliana Carrillo, will stay in Tulare County, at least for now, where she's facing robbery accusations. Keiko 9, Jamela Aragawi. Okay, you asked a question in the chat. You said, did she kill them after the court order? The answer is yes. So Can Can asked, did the mother kill the children after hearing the court order? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. So what happened is the father already had custody legally of the kids since March, and he was doing everything that he could legally do to try to get custody of the kids. And the mom just didn't deliver the kids. So to answer your question, yes, unfortunately, yes. It looks at the background on this tragic case. A heartbreaking tragedy that begs the question of what happened that made it possible for a mother who allegedly took the lives of her three young kids. Uh, Lee, my, my friend and advocate in the chat, Lee Hellinger asked, was CPS ever called prior to the homicides? The answer to that question is yes. The answer to that question is yes. Uh, was that the right cash app I sent to uh, Elizabeth? Let me see. To answer your question, oh, wow, Elizabeth, yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. Said, thank you for all that you do. You've changed my parenting. Um, can you do me a favor, Elizabeth? And I, and I don't, I want to keep the amount that she sent private, but she sent 
a very good amount and as well as uh jennifer jennifer r so if you're listening thank you very much i'm gonna read them here in a moment i don't want to interrupt the story by doing this but yes wow thank you so much but can you please tell them in the chat and it'll show on the screen so people can understand your story when you say that i've uh that i've changed your parenting like would you kind of give them some details i did get your donation and it is an amazing donation and thank you so much, Elizabeth, in the chat. Elizabeth Crossan, in the chat. If you would, let them know kind of what you've learned. What do you feel like you've learned and how have you been able to apply it? And I feel like those are the type of things that I love to share with our AFC family right there. But Lee, to answer your question, ma'am, yes, it is. It is. That's what happened. I think they said CPS was called multiple times, but see, but see, here's the problem. CPS never give, gives the details. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Hold on just a second, y'all. Give me a moment here. Let me, let me read it verbatim. Didn't repeatedly contacted the Department of Children and Family Services because he felt like the mother needed help. And they responded and didn't give, but they didn't give any details. Make sure. So a lot of times they use the word children in here. Yeah, so yes, to answer your question, that's correct. So the, apparently the dad had reached out to a CPS. There was a, a way to protect the children if somebody noticed something. According to court documents in Tulare County Family Court, the children's father, Eric Denton, said he had noticed a change in their mother, Liliana Carrillo. Denton wrote, on February 25th, Carrillo took our three children and took all their legal documents, including their birth certificate, and refuses to disclose their location. Court records show Denton sought custody of the children on March 1st in Tulare County Family Court and petitioned for a mental health evaluation of Carrillo. On March 12th, Carrillo sought a temporary restraining order against Denton in L.A. County. This is the kind of case that every family law practitioner just dreads. We spoke with legal analyst Alexandra Kazarian who reviewed the documents in the case. Looking at the documents, it looks like a couple that's going back and forth during a really tough time in their relationship. Um, both sides seem to be lodging some um, pretty serious claims against the other side. In the papers, Denton says Liliana Carrillo was having psychosis. He says at some point she thought she was solely responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic and accused him of doing something inappropriate with one of their children. It's really hard to know who's telling the truth, who's exaggerating, and what steps you need to take to really protect the children. How does a judge on a bench who's hearing these allegations on paper for the first time, how does the judge make that decision? Um, these are snap decisions that people make. On March 26, a judge ruled the couple would continue joint custody. There was another hearing in the case set for this Wednesday. In Reseda, Hermela Aragawi, KCAL 9 News. A community stunned by... Okay, for those who are just getting here, I'm gonna play one more news video and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my closing thoughts. Because we still have a second story to tell, okay? We'll, we'll tell the second story here in just a moment. I'm going to play one more news video, and then I'm going to give my closing thoughts on this particular story, because I got a little bit more to say. She did a horrific crime here. That she followed it up by another crime north of here. And it's those behaviors that ultimately got her caught. A woman suspected of murdering her three young children in the Los Angeles area arrested in the South Valley. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Shauna Kalafi. Authorities say the bodies of her children were found this morning by their grandmother in Reseda. Their mother, the sole suspect, had taken off only to be found in Tulare County this afternoon. KC24's Liv Johnson has the latest. Well, Shauna, Sheriff Mike Boudreaux says she was arrested after she crashed the car she was driving in the Ponderosa area. That's when they connected her to the case in Southern California. And tonight, she's at the Cahuilla Delta Medical Center in Visalia recovering from injuries. 
The Tulare County Sheriff's Office responded to a car accident in the Ponderosa area on Saturday afternoon where they found 30-year-old Liliana Carrillo in a stolen car and arrested her for carjacking. During that arrest, they learned she was wanted for the murder of her three children, ages three, two, and six months. While they're making the arrest, they learn that she's actually wanted for the homicides of three small children in the Los Angeles area. The Los Angeles Police Department says Carrillo's children were found dead this morning when their grandmother returned home from work. Police say it appeared the three children had been stabbed to death. The official cause and motive are under investigation. We will be in touch with the, the Department of Family and Children Services of Los Angeles uh, County to find out a little more about the background of the. And I'm going to say the same thing about him. He sounds stupid getting in front of a mic with a mask on, bro. We can't hear what you're saying at all. Why even get up there with a mask on? You that scared of COVID, stay at home. Don't get up there with a damn mask on. We can't understand. Would y'all like for me to, look, I got mine with me. How about this? How about we just do the show and I'm gonna just have my AFC mask on the whole damn stream. Would y'all like that? Right? If you're gonna do an interview, take the mask off. Lord have mercy. Family, but at this time, we're just trying to put this puzzle together. Authorities say Carrillo crashed two cars during her flee from Los Angeles. The first accident occurred on Highway 65, just north of Bakersfield. That's where a Tulare County resident pulled over to help and she stole his car, later crashing in Ponderosa. Tulare County Sheriff Mike Boudreau says the man she carjacked was his friend. He was pretty shocked and taken back. Uh, he's a good man. He's the type of guy that would stop and help, not just drive by. Boudreau says it didn't appear Carrillo was under the influence. She was airlifted to Cahuilla Delta to be treated for her injuries while being watched by armed guards. We want to make sure that she is taken care of, but we also want to make sure that she's transported to the area of jurisdiction so that she can, you know, face whatever prosecution may or may not occur down there. Let me give my closing thoughts. We're going to end it right there. Let me go ahead and get my closing thoughts about this. First and foremost, if y'all were listening, we just heard that the woman jacked her friend, her own friend. So I told y'all she didn't look like she was that physically imposing of a person to be able to carjack somebody. And I might have been right. So the friend, knowing that they just said that the friend would give the shirt off of, of, of their back to help this mother, this woman out, and knowing that she's a mother, probably just gave up the vehicle and he had to report it that it was stolen because he probably didn't know what the hell was going on. <coughs> Excuse me. So she took advantage of her so-called friend, okay? And again, I want to remind you guys that Child Protective Services was called prior, and I know some people might look at this and say, well, CPS failed again. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. CPS said... The dad should have custody. They put in the order, sign the, sign the papers, said, send them kids over there to him. You, we'll figure it out with you later, but for now, he got custody, send them kids over there to him. So he was supposed to get the kids and he's trying to be patient. The father did the right thing because you can't go poking the bear and did not expect for the bear to attack. So he didn't want to angry this big bear looking woman and potentially hurt his kids. So he was trying to be patient with her. He was trying to give her some time. He didn't want to make her upset. He was just like, hey, this is what the court order say. Whenever you're ready, I'll be here ready to pick up the kids so we can live up to the order that was granted legally. She lost custody. And I'm gonna tell you guys something in America. If a mother loses custody, in this case, if you lose custody of three children, then at that point, you need to back off and say, you know what? You gotta be woman enough to be able to allow this system to do what it's supposed to do and allow that father to be there. And I always hear women talking about what well, these men don't wanna be in their children's lives. How many of y'all have heard a woman say that? I've heard it before. I've heard women say that. He don't wanna be a daddy to his kids. Well, most men, if you allow them the opportunity, unmolested, will be fathers to their kids.
Don't hound them. Just keep the door open. And shout out to my cousin. I told my cousin that when she was going through her divorce. And I told her, I said, you and him might be going through something, but don't ever close that door on that man. Leave that door open whenever and however he wants to see his kids, pick his kids up, spend time with his kids. Allow him to be able to do so. You do not want to live a life of regret by closing that door because you can't undo it. But you give him a chance. If you don't live up to that chance, then you've tried. You've done all you can do. And that's what a lot of us that have these broken families have to do is we have to be able to work together. This was a simple thing to remedy. Just don't be a selfish bitch. That's simple. But no, the mama didn't want to didn't want to feel like less of a woman. It don't make you less of a woman if you lose your kids. It does make you less of a woman if you murder the kids to spite the man. Uh-huh, that makes you less of a mother. If you're abusing your children, yes, that might make you one. If you stab your children to death, not one, not two, but three, yes, that might make you less of a woman. But I always try to remind you guys, and I want you guys to stay encouraged, especially for those who might be listening to my stream, might be listening to my voice, who might be going through something right now. Let me tell you guys this. This ain't a news station. I ain't here to report the news. I'm here to give you my commentary on things that happen. These are educational moments. You see people in this chat who say that they learn stuff from this channel. And I'm glad that even if we get one or two or three people listening, I'm thankful for anybody who listens. As long as you still have breath in your body, there is a chance to get better. There is a chance to work through it. Please do not be discouraged. Don't give up and definitely don't take it out on your children. Look at my shirt. It says, babies, lives matter. The AFC. We are the advocates for children. We're going to advocate for children first. We're also going to stand on the necks of those who hurt children who can't speak for themselves nor defend themselves. That woman deserves every bit of life in prison with no opportunity to get paroled and never another opportunity to be around kids or procreate. Hashtag TTO, terrible mother. RIP to those babies, those beautiful souls. They deserved an opportunity to grow up and become something great. So to those angels, all three of them, RIP. I'm DJ Just J, where the AFC will be advocate for children first. Thank you for listening to the story with an open mind and an open heart. Thank you. Guys, can I tell y'all one more story that did not really hit the news airwaves? I want to tell y'all one more story if y'all got time and then I'll let y'all go. I know it's really late for some of y'all. And the majority of people have to be at work in the morning. Share your city, share your state, share your country. If we got a few people here from outside of the United States, please share with us. Let us know where you're from while I pull up this very next story, which is a little bit short, but I got a lot to say about it. So feel free to spam the chat. You can let us know where you're from. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to share as a family together. Let us know where you're from, where you represent, and what time it is, where you're at. I'm not going to keep y'all here long, but I do have to tell y'all about this Floridian bastard let me see if I could get his face up on the screen. This fool right here. This is a Floridian bastard right here. Look at that. Nova Scotia, Canada in the building. How about Nova Scotia? We got, see, I see I got my Texas people here. Florida. Oh, yeah. We're getting, getting ready to talk about this. Uh, this is, is it Florida? A Florida man. Yep, we're getting ready to talk about Florida. Winter Haven, Florida, to be specific. Got West Virginia in the building, North Carolina. I might see y'all next month in North Carolina. So y'all stand by. OKC in the building. Shout out, OKC. Yes, look at that. We got two people OKC in here. I'm Northside OKC, baby. You heard me? Originally born and raised. But I'm out here in Texas now. Yeah, shout out Puerto, Puerto Rico in the building. Philippines. I got uh on my... On my on my uncle's side, he's married to his wife, my aunt. She's Philippine. Shout out to her. Love the Philippines. Michigan in the building. 
Thank you so much, Lee. I appreciate that. Got Georgia in here. Alabama, Indiana, New Mexico, Detroit, Louisiana. I'll be in the boot in August. Just so y'all know, I will be in the boot in August. So stand by on that. Maryland, be more. Vegas, Minnesota. Let's talk about this food that y'all see on my screen right here. I can't even describe what he looks like. <laughs> Man, let's see. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna try to be a little bit respectful. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a hashtag that we came up with on this channel called hashtag when you date thugs, you date death, hashtag mom's boyfriend. And I believe that this particular story is going to be more relevant than it ever was. And I want y'all to look at this dude on my screen with those jaundiced eyes. Look like he'd been living on the streets and probably had been, which is how he ended up with this woman because he didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And she must have felt bad for him and she must have needed her as a man so bad, right? This mother must have needed this man so bad that she left her kid with this dude. I want y'all to understand, this is becoming stupid at this point that I continue to keep reporting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the same exact story. I want y'all to think about this. There are a lot of types of stories that I don't even have to talk about. I could pick one narrative and just pick the stories out. Very easy to pick out. This same narrative, which is hashtag mom's boyfriend. It is a thing that is plaguing children. I don't care if it plagues adults, it's plaguing children. If you have children, this cannot be your plight. This has to be fixed. This is avoidable. You can stand to be lonely, okay? I wanna give a shout out and a huge shout out and say thank you and shout out to all my good sisters out there, my good mothers out there, all the good women out there. They understand that this don't apply to them. Hashtag not all, but this is so many mothers who are having children outside of wedlock and just get with the next man. Let's talk about this fool that y'all see on my screen. This man allegedly bit with his teeth, B-I-T. He bit, he beat, and he squeezed his girlfriend's two-year-old son, a two-year-old boy to death. That baby right there looks like the most sweet and innocent little, ch little, little boy, the little child ever. Beautiful baby boy. Probably gave nobody issues and made the world such a better place. And this is what this baby had to live through. This boy was abused to death after this man flew into a rage when this baby urinated on a couch. So what we're talking about yet again is a potty training accident. And apparently people like this food that y'all see on my screen have no idea how humans are raised. They have no idea. They don't know how animals are raised. They damn sure don't know how humans are raised because apparently this dude don't understand that babies have to get changed, they have to get cleaned, they have to be taken care of in a gentle manner, and when they get old enough to be able to walk and talk, they are still learning, right? Matter of fact, if y'all take a look at this dude's face, he really looks like he's slower than a bottle of molasses that's been left out in a, in a, in a snow. The boy looked like he would lose a race to a turtle. He looked real slow in the face. Apparently, he don't understand that adults only learn to go to the bathroom and handle their bodily functions because they had to be taught and somebody was patient with them. Apparently, he just thought a baby should just automatically know. Police say that this man by the name of, let me see, how do you pronounce his name? A L E. G-R-A-Y, Ali Gray, Ali Gray, Ale Gray, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Let me see if I can put his name, 
Allie Gray. How do you pronounce that? I'm going to just call him mom's boyfriend. Allie Gray Demaya. He got a girly middle name. D-A-M-I-A-H. Demaya Jones, who's 30 years old. So mom's boyfriend is 30 years old. He was in a relationship with the boy's mom, and he admitted to hitting the toddler until he passed out late on Thursday night. So now we don't have to say alleged he did it. Okay? He's the cause of this baby boy's death. Makes you wonder what a biological father was. I wonder if this mother made the father go through so much trouble to see his kid, but let but just would give this man unfettered access to this kid. We're gonna call him Allegra, right? He looks he looks like he got a lot of allergy problems. Anyway, rather than calling 911, mom's boyfriend, who is from Winter Haven, Florida, he began texting his girlfriend at 11 p.m. while she was at work, prompting her to call for help. Nam ho re can kyo. Nam ho re can kyo. Nam ho re can kyo. What? Rewind. Let's read that sentence again. Are you kidding me? Let's read that again. This man beat this child until it passed out. And rather than calling 911, mom's boyfriend texted his girlfriend. Didn't even call her. He sent her a effing text message while she was at work, which also would make me ask a question. What was mom doing for a job at 11 p.m.? I wonder whose pole mom was dancing on at 11 p.m. or whose lap she was bouncing up and down on. I'm just asking a question. I don't know what she do for a living. I'm throwing out some accusations because I would like to actually have some real answers. I believe this baby deserved to know what in the world mom was doing that was so important that you had to leave me with this fool with those jaundiced eyes who clearly don't know how to be a father, a parent, or a human being. But let's move on. Mom's boyfriend has now been charged with manslaughter over the attack. Police arrived at the apartment in Lakeland at around 12.45 a.m. Lord Jesus. I call on God's name because this, somebody got to come down and save us. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is insane. You said maybe she's a night nurse. Maybe she's a head nurse. Let's move on past that though. Head nurse. Let's, anyway, let's get past the jokes. 12.45. One hour and 45 minutes. Let's lock that into our brains for a moment. He began texting the girlfriend at 11 p.m., but the police arrived at 12.45 a.m., before paramedics took the child to the hospital. An hour and 45 minutes, and the boy died shortly after arriving, which means if the process would have been expedited, maybe this baby's life would have been saved. But his intention was never to save the kid, let alone let this child live a productive life for beating a two-year-old. Let me ask you guys a question. How many people in the chat believe that it is the right course of action that when you have a two-year-old child, whether it be a boy or a girl, since we believe in equality, how many of you guys believe that if a child pees on itself, the proper course of action is to beat the absolute dog crap out of that child? How many of you guys believe, yes, that's what I went through as a kid, so that's what I'm going to do to my kid? That's what I think everybody should do to their kid. How many of y'all believe that? You think that's the right way to go about things? Do we not have enough brain power to teach a two-year-old who's only barely 24 months old? You can't reason with a child. You can't teach a child. You can't mold a child. You can't work with a child. We just react. I thought the, I thought the children were supposed to learn from us. You can't just go around and 
beat the hell out of an adult because they do something that you didn't want them to do, can you? Can you go beat your wife up because she didn't have your dinner ready when you got home? Is that is that okay? No, that, oh, that's right. That's not okay. So how is it not okay that you can't beat your wife, can't beat your girlfriend, can't go, but you can beat a child who's a quarter of your size, can't speak for itself, and has no way of being able to defend itself against your attacks? How is that ever okay? Are we just that dumb? Are we that dumb? And I say we, because there's still people in this world that believe it's okay to spank children. How many of you guys believe that it's okay to spank children? I damn sure don't. And guess what? I come from a background where all of us generationally believed that that was the right course of action. I've even talked to my parents and I love my parents to the end of the earth. But I've even told my parents, I believe that we might have been raised wrong. I think we can do better. That's the way it should be. We have to break the curse. Huh? Yes. We can, when you know better, you should do better. I believe in the power of the mind. The mind is a very powerful thing. It's a very influential thing. Children are like sponges. They will absorb and regurgitate what you give them. If you give children respect, respect will reciprocate. It will come back to you. Too many times we don't even give children respect. We give them the worst foods ever and then expect for them to, to not produce trash. The cheapest, nastiest, and dirty things we give to our kids and then wonder why they can't figure it out when they grow up. We got to start doing better. If you are still spanking and hitting your kids, then I'm sorry. You are just not a suitable parent. You shouldn't be a parent. You shouldn't have kids if you physically discipline your children. If you have to hit them, jerk them, spank them, body slam them off the top rope, throw them through a window, run them over with a car, shoot them in a chest with a, with, with a gun twice because they overflowed the toilet, then you're probably not a suitable parent. That last part of what I just said is actually a real story. There was a fool, a fool, an absolute fool, just like him recently that I did a story on that shot a little girl because she overflowed the toilet. He took a gun and shot her in the chest, not once, but twice, and that baby died. But everybody wonders what's wrong with me. My message is apparently wrong. But let's move on. Jones reportedly told detectives that he popped the boy on the hand and leg and threw him into an air mattress. Officers say he then lifted the infant and held him forcefully against his own body by squeezing his arm, his own arm, against the child's stomach. The mom's boyfriend then took the boy to the bathroom where he vomited and put him back on the air mattress, it is claimed. He later found the boy unresponsive and claimed to try to wake him up by, by biting his forearm. How many times have y'all heard these people in my stories just on my channel? If you don't hear it nowhere else, how many times have you heard on my channel where they beat these children to death, then so-called try to put them in a shower to revive them, but this man said he took his nasty rabies teeth and sunk his teeth into the arm of the child. You just can't be that level of dumb. This man said he bit the child to revive the child. What? Guys, I am not misreading what I wrote. Let me read it again. He said he found the boy unresponsive and he said he tried to wake him up by biting his forearm. You just can't be that level of dumb. 
After texting the boy's mom, she called him back on FaceTime. After he showed her the child's body, she immediately called for help. So I'm assuming that she called 911. Several bruises, including black, uh, brain bleeding, a laceration on the liver, and likely adult human bite marks to the left forearm where were found on the victim. They said where, but they meant were found on the victim. Medical examiner Dr. Stephen Nelson ruled the boy's death to be a homicide by blunt force trauma. Jones's uh, mom's boyfriend, Jones, has been charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child and being held in Polk County Jail with no bond. But you know what? This man doesn't need jail time. Do y'all know what he needs? This man don't need a jail. This man needs a hell to be in next to Satan. He is a demon. He is a thug. And y'all know what happens when you take your children to the thug zoo, right? Are y'all familiar with the thug zoo? Oh, you've never heard of the thug zoo? Let me explain to you guys what the thug zoo is. And I want y'all to remember, just because you look at his face and see that he's a black man, that is not what I'm referring to as a thug. Thug is an action, not a skin color. You get that? Mom decides to take her kid because mom has to go bounce up on a pole at 11 o'clock at night, decides to drop her kid off at the thug zoo. Mom dropped her kid off at the thug zoo, put her kid inside the thug lion cage, and then gets a call from the zoo saying that your kid is dead. And mom is wondering, well, I was wonder how did that happen? I don't know why the thug lion would kill my baby. You go through everything possible to prevent the biological father from spending time with his kid, being in this kid's life. He got to pay child support. He got to fight you for custody. He got to beg and plead you. He got to get cussed out by you. His girlfriends be harassing you on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, harassing you, talking about you's a dead, you's a deadbeat daddy. You's don't want to be a part of your son's life. You's a terrible man. You slept with that woman and took advantage of that woman. That man, that father receives all of that vitriol right? Y'all know what vitriol is, right? But this man who looked like somebody literally scraped him off the side of the concrete, he looks like a old piece of gum that's been left to just rot on the side of the street. That dude looks like a horribly smelling person. He just looked like he smelled bad. Like, it's like I could damn near smell him through the screen. Can y'all smell that? Smells really like, like, I don't know. It's, it just smells like a horrible person, huh? You go through all of that, but this man doesn't have to provide you proof that he's a good father. He don't have to provide you proof that he is a good caretaker, that he knows how to take care of a two-year-old in crucial situations. You just say, I like screwing that man. And so that makes that man a suitable parent to be around your baby. So let me tell you guys what my honest opinion is. This mother cares nothing for that child y'all might see her pop up with a gofundme i can guarantee you here in like the next 2.3 days and yes i said 2.3 days that there's gonna be a gofundme that pops up talking about y'all please y'all pray for me i was going through so much and i was at work and i didn't never know this man would do this to this baby he's wrong and I hope we get justice and I hope you guys feel it in your heart to donate me $55,000 to bury my sweet two year old baby boy he is the light of my life I would have gave my life for him I'd do anything for my baby <laughs> where's my tissue where's my tissue let me uh, wipe y'all see the tears you see the tears yes oh y'all can see the tears <sighs> no life insurance no biological father you are quote unquote working at 11 p.m at night whether you're the head nurse or the head nurse. 
biological father, we won't give him a chance, but we will stick our kid with a dude who ain't qualified to brush his teeth by himself. And I'm gonna tell you guys, the reason why I am as harsh as I am on biological mothers and biological fathers is because that's where the responsibility lies. And this dude should never have gotten an opportunity to be around your kid by himself. You don't know anything about him. And I can guarantee you there is a 99.9% .9 chance that that mother did not do a background check on that man. I'm willing to bet anybody a whole $1,000 that the biological mother of this little boy did not do a background check on this man. What do y'all want to bet? Let me prove my case. Why I feel so confident. Because if she did, then she would realize that this man probably is not qualified to be around any children and might even have a record that prevents him from being around children altogether. He just looks like he has that kind of face. I like to judge a book by its cover, huh? He just looks like an unproductive face, have it ass dude. I wouldn't trust this man around a plant, let alone a child. I wouldn't trust my children around anybody, let alone somebody who got a face like that, who looks like he could rob a pastor. Looks like he could kick a old lady over in the street. Look what he did to a two-year-old boy who couldn't speak for himself, couldn't defend himself, shares his race. And let me tell you guys this while we finish this out. We so quick to talk about the big bad police. Are we not? We always talk about defunding the police and the police shot down another innocent, unarmed black man. We is all on ESPN talking about another young black man that's been taken out by the police and we has got to stop the police and we're going to make this a national campaign against the police. Huh? Y'all seen that little yellow, high yellow light skinned boy who was an adult, by the way? Yes. Who was shot down by the police he was a father he was a a community figure and he's been taken out his bright light has been extinguished <laughs> the only reason i say that is to say this why does a grown adult's life matter more than children the last effing time that i checked men like me and men like days of old would give our lives for our families. Would give our lives to protect children. Even the mafia believed that you shouldn't touch women and children, especially children. Even they had a sense of honor about those who can't defend themselves. Where have we gone in America where the focus has shifted in places where it doesn't really affect us as much. I can report about these stories 10 times a day. Usually with these police on black men crimes, and it ain't black women, it's only black men, but those type of crimes usually happen a handful of times a year. Should they happen? I don't really give a crap. It's just my personal opinion, whether they happen or whether they don't, because you know why I don't care? Because I believe as an adult, you should do the best that you can to try to not put yourself in harm's way, huh? When you see the oncoming train coming, maybe you shouldn't jump in front of the goddamn thing. So if we believe that the police are these big bad wolves out there, then maybe we should try to avoid getting into situations that cause them to be around us. And if they are around us, then maybe we shouldn't make any sudden movements. Do people want to get mad about that? I'm sure that they are. But you're going to completely omit and forget about the point that I'm making. It don't matter as much. I'm going to say it again. It don't matter as much. Let me say it one more time. Those scenarios do not matter as much as our babies' lives who are being taken every day by mom's boyfriends. People that look just like him. And you know what makes it even worse? The fact that it's always somebody who shares our own skin color. We're supposed to be 
black power, but it's black power that's killing us more than anybody is. Should we care more about the one or two or three or four or five lives that the police get it wrong? Should we put 100% of our focus into that? Or should we divert some of that focus, some of that funding, some of those protesters, some of those advocates to our children who need us? Do black babies' lives not matter? If they do, then why aren't we protecting them? Why aren't we advocating for them? Why aren't we going as hard for them as we do for all of these other situations? I'm just confused by that. I believe that babies' lives matter and they should matter first. If you don't believe that they do, then you know what you can do and you know where you can shove it. I'm going to take a stand against anybody and everybody who believes that anybody else's life should be put over these babies. And I'm going to show y'all this solo picture. I am so upset right now. I'm going to calm myself down while I say this last part. Let me put this baby's face up on the screen. I want y'all to look at this baby's face. That's where our focus should be. That's where our anguish should be. That's where our frustration should be. That's where our love should be. That's where our money should be. That's where our advocacy should be. But this baby, he could not speak for himself and he damn sure couldn't defend himself against mom's boyfriend. To that precious, beautiful baby boy, that soul, young prince, we're going to fight and you did not die in vain, young man. You did not die in vain. We're going to fight for you. I believe that there are people out there who believe that babies' lives matter. And I'm asking and praying and hoping that you guys will jump on a movement like this. Be advocates in real life. If you see something, please say something. And do not put your children in harm's way. There is nothing more worse than putting your children in harm's way for what you believe is your own personal pleasure. To this beautiful baby boy, young prince, our heart and our prayers are with you. R.I.P. I'm DJ Just J, and I seriously doubt, I don't know where else you'll get a message this unique, but like I said, I hope you guys listen and listen very carefully with an open mind and an open heart. And from my heart to yours, I love all of you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys on the next stream. Because guess what? We still got more lives just like he has to talk about. Okay? Thank you so much. I know there are some people out there who are not going to understand my message. There are some people who might initially get mad about my message. But like I said, I just hope and I hope that they listen with an open mind. Okay? We got to start doing better in this world. I'm about to give everybody their shout outs and show some love. Thank you guys so much. And please show some love to our sponsors as well that help make this whole advocacy possible. Okay. Thank y'all. North Authentic Designer has some of the most glamorous and stylish handbags your girl has ever seen. So ladies, if you want to get fly and fellas, if you want to take care of your lady, please be sure to go to www.norris915.com. www.norris915.com. That's right www.norris915.com Hello listeners, come mask up with Keyline Designs where you reap what we sow. We offer essential handcrafted face masks made with 100% cotton, equipped with a built-in filter and a slot for refillable filters. Our masks have many uses like riding motorcycles, ATVs, while out in public places, outside exercising, lawn and gardening, and helps prevent the spread of germs. We offer bling, sports logos, monograms, many assorted fabrics and colors. 
We make child size masks starting at the age of two. Come join us today for the launch of our new website at keylinedesigns.com. Please be sure to like and follow our page on Facebook. Our links can be found in the description box of this video. Thank you.